But for more on this, Tehran University Professor Mohammed Morandi joins us now live. Um, Muhammad, hi, Mohammed. So the resignation hasn't formally been accepted by Rouhani, but it comes as a surprise, doesn't it? The issue itself was uh, linked to protocol because um, when President Assad came to Iran, apparently he was brought uh, for secretly for security reasons, so no one knew he was coming to the country. And when he came, he went directly to see the leader and the president. And Dr. Zarif was unhappy that the president didn't invite him to the meeting. Uh, so, but it wasn't, a, an, uh, the president later on explained that it wasn't a, a meeting. Uh, where uh, of substance in the sense that Pre doc Dr. Zarif would have been needed. So I think President Rouhani was trying to uh, persuade Dr. Zarif to uh, uh, return to the cabinet. But I, so I think the, the resignation is really directly linked to this. But I think there are also other issues. The, the problems with the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, the fact that uh, Trump has exited the agreement, the fact that the EU has been unable or unwilling, depending on who you ask, to stand up to Trump and abide by their side of the bargain. This has put a lot of pressure on Dr. Zeddy. He's been a very good foreign minister. He's represented Iran very well. He's defended Iran's position uh, very uh, vigorously and very effectively, in, in my opinion. But it has taken a toll. And many people in Iran are upset that uh, why is Iran abiding by a side of the bargain and the Europeans uh, there in violation of the agreement, even though it's under pressure from the U.S., but still Iranians are upset about that. So it is a, uh, it, it, it has taken its toll, the pressure, and I think that's probably one reason why Dr. Zarif uh, has resigned. So, Mohammed Zarif gave an interview recently and had some harsh words. He said the foreign policy is being poisoned by party and factional fighting. What does he mean by that? Well, you know, that's one of the interesting things that I always remind people, and that is that often in the Western media, and uh, your uh, TRT has a much more nuanced uh, look at our part of the world, fortunately. In the Western media, it's often Iran is depicted as some sort of dictatorship where there are no voices. Iran is a, a place where uh, we have all sorts of different political parties, political factions. All day today, uh, the different factions and their websites and their newspapers have been at each other's throats over this particular issue. So, which is, and it's been very interesting. But uh, there is a the, there is a big debate in Iran about the usefulness of the JCPOA. Some have been um, pressing uh, for Iran to exit the deal. Some have been calling for Iran to uh, discontinue cooperation with the IAEA or to limit their cooperation. And there's also been a, bit, a big debate about um, uh, Iran joining uh, or the FATF. Uh, and there's concern about uh, whether we should join or not and what sort of access that will give the United States to Iran's banking system. So all of these issues right now are being debated in Iran. And as I said, it's, it becomes very difficult for the foreign minister because he's in the middle of all these issues. Right now, the, uh, the confrontation between the United States and Iran is, of course, very important for Iranians. And the fact that the Europeans, despite rhetoric, they've effectively been abiding by the United States. And the fact that the Europeans have been looking for regime change alongside the Americans in Venezuela, I think has also uh, hurt uh, their position in Iran because Iranians believe, many Iranians are saying, well, the Europeans, even though they're anti-Trump in language, but in reality, they abide with, by what he dictates. Well, we have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World, Mohammed Marandi.